Good evening YouTube, Best of the Goats here and today we're going to showcase Trap Burning Abyss. I haven't shown this deck in a while because it's been kind of under the radar, aka not very good recently, but um, with the new decks of my locals I thought a grindier version with a bunch of trap cards could do well and it turned out it did. I took the deck to went 3-0 with my locals, beating a, a Cyberth combo deck, a Kashdira Scareclaw deck and a Ancient Warrior Floodgate deck. The only losing to a pure Kashdira deck. So yeah, basically this deck is it, 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 it's about playing my Travis Park with a grindy point out, recycling our resources with the Sea Dante loop, eventually either fishing off with a big Zeus or an Axis Core line. So let's uh, take a look. Starting things off, we have one copy each of Backjack and Tour Guide. These are the only non BAs we play in the deck. And the only ones I think we really need, we're not playing hand traps because we're playing so many back row. So um, I only went, went with one tour guide this time because I didn't want to draw this in the opening hand. This is only here uh, as a secondary, t as a second turn card of a scam. Essentially, you want to do your full BA combos, end up by dumping scam, getting this the next turn, or place, hopefully starting through your back row, you spend this, get another BA, and you start to OTK with the aforementioned lines. Because uh, if you summon this and it gets ashed on the first turn, you're just dead. Because at this point in the game, you can't just sit on a talk and a couple of back row, you're going to get OTK'd through that. Backjack, it's here mostly to get milled with a Dante or some of Beatrice. It can slip top of your deck, and it can basically give you another trap card, being an upside goblin, essentially. Uh, for the BAs, we, it's still free graph. Free Seer. Free... And three Scam. So uh, these haven't changed since the last build. Graph is still the best starter with Tour Guide to make a to make a full Beatrice IP combo. This person with a BA can get you the Cherubini Dante with a couple on the online with a scam set at the end. Uh, so it's still the best BA. See it, best for the grind. You can keep recycling your Dante, which, 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 which can then recycle it, giving you more resources, and scam obviously gets you Tour Guide or the BAs at the end phase, keeping your hand full. Honestly, I can't see a situation where these guys ever get changed unless we get some new support. Please, Konami, new support. Uh, next up, we have access to Free Fava. Um, I was considering cutting this down to two at one point, but then I thought this can um, take material off of Pearly before it becomes untou 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 untouchable. It can also take material off of off of um, Caesar. It can also it can also um, possibly do something in Shangira. So um, I really like this card in the deck still. And if I had access to SP Little Knights, I would definitely play it in this deck as well, because if you use this to make SP, that's three vanishes in a turn, which is a really powerful way to break a board. Uh, depending on the meta, I would cut this down to two, if, if, if you're not playing as a lot of decks with a lot of XCs, but in my locals, it's still really good. Next, we have access to Double Alich and Double Baba for the next base. Alich is here because I'm still playing the Purple Dante to get out for Beatrice. So this gives us a card draw and a Veiler if, if that's in the field. And of course Barbar's still here to burn for time. Um, I should play two of this because it's time with the, with the grindiest of the deck. If you know time is coming out close, you can burn this and then burn another one. Which puts you in the position to do the first moth for time or be in the win position when time is cold. If you want to do that even further, you can play Nightmare Shark. Because that would allow you to... Um, do a, do, a, do a 2000 direct attack plus 900 pieces of burn damage, which is a good way to finish off the opponent. Uh, one Libich and one Kalkab, these are mostly just names, but Libich can work. If you've got, like, say, a unicorn, you can summon this, it'll die. It'll summon another BA and again gets effects, and you can then climb into access code. Kalkab is just here for a name, mostly. And that's all the monsters in the deck. For spells, we start things off with three pots of prosperity. Now, the reason I really like this card is because um, this deck pretty much fixes the biggest problem that Trap B has always had, which is opening up too much of one or not the other. Like, for example, if you open up only BAs, you, you can't really go that far with your plays. Um, and if you open up a lot of traps only one BA, you, you're specifically hoping you don't get wiped out. With this, if that does happen, you can play this, send three or six, and dig for whichever piece you're missing, either more backwards to enforce your field. Or another monster to take your combos going. I'm so glad this card was actually made available to everybody now. I generally think, I generally think, even if it goes to one, I'll still be playing it. 
but I don't think it needs to personally because now that everyone's got access to it, it, it I think it's all in the even playing field now. That's my opinion. One foolish because it's, it's just one other BA name in the deck. Um, you can do dump graph for a search, dump seer to get by Dante, dump scam for a, a, a tour guide. You can dump far if you to get the female piece of removal. It's kind of one of the first on the deck. And my own little tech here, double enemy controller. Uh, I've experimented with this in other decks, like in chains as well. Uh, but I like it a lot in here because if you, if you use this with a Dante with a seer and drift, you've got a really powerful play here because you can steal their monster, don't they see a loop? So the seal go back in your hand, the monster come back on the field, and you've basically lost nothing and gotten a quick play change of heart. That is really good. And next are traps, which is the back one of this deck. A double trap trick, because if I play uh, two or three copies of your traps, you can just play four or five copies of those traps. I play three if I have the room, but I want to keep this deck at a decent card length, uh, just a decent amount of cards, so I, so I didn't Again, a situation I mentioned where I don't have enough BAs. Uh, then we have access to uh, two Fiend Grief, two Lost Winds, and two Paleozoic Dynamishkis. Uh, I'm playing two of these because of the trap tricks can search them. Uh, Fiend Griefing, I'll also be replacing with Archfiend's Ghastly Glitch when I get my second or third copy of it. Because they both do the same thing of dumping a Fiend. But this card, it only basically crawls an opponent, whereas the Glitch can remove something. Uh, you can put this all to Town Cider. I like this because I think it's easier to get back. And you got uh, Dynamishkus, which is removal, that lets you just got a BA to move to Adventure Place. Again, you've you got this three if you want to, but I like the trap, I like the versatility of the Trap Tricks engine. For the three off traps, we are playing three ITP, because this is by far the best removal in this deck. As long as you don't go against Cash Data, which of course was the one match I drew two of these buggers again in, but what can you do? So with this card, if you don't know, you can summon Monster of Grave, the bash it and another monster of the same type, so this is basically taking two pieces of resources from certain opponents. And if you are playing in, and if you are playing uh, against Kashdira, I was thinking decide you could take this out for, I'll show you later. And finally, three torrential tributes. Uh this can basically it's, it's a field nuke against anything that's not unchained, and you're almost almost gonna end up better than your opponent again if that doesn't play unchained. Because you can use this, pop it on say. Get a, a, a minimum game cut back into your hand. If you've got a Searing Drit, you get the Dante back, you can get graphs, searches, and all that other stuff. This is basically the better fire lake, if you will. Again, not great against Unchained, but there are things you can take this out for going second. And that's the main uh, 42 card deck, I believe. If we go to the extra, the BAs haven't changed since the last time. Double Dante, one Pebble Dante, one Beatrice, one Cherubini. Uh, some builds of BA these days are playing 3 Dante for the grind. I don't think it's necessary. I think 2 is enough because the games don't go that long. A Pivotal Dante is still here because he's the best thing to get off of Beatrice. <laughs> he's card draw that can trigger off effects. To, and if you have single grindy decks, when he dies, you can stick you can slip a card from the opponent's hand, which um, can help you win the resources game. Cherubini is still one of the best starters in the deck, and Beatrice, I'm playing until she gets banned. Then we have for the links. Let me uh let me Phoenix to pop floodgates, IP and the unicorn because I don't have access to a speak little knight. This is this is another piece of removal that can then link climb into access code talker for the finish. Honestly, I think I was playing this deck again, I might switch this out for a brawl sword because you don't have that many different types of links in this deck. So you can you, you can only get one or two pops. In fact, the one game I won this, I didn't even win with an OTK. I just popped a couple of things, did five did five three damage, create a unicorn engrave. The next turn popped the one thing they summoned and swung for lethal. I think if I had both that I could have OTK'd in that in that game. Uh, then we have one muckbreaker which should have been which would have been SP if I had it. And I think honestly I, I, I probably should have played a Cerberus instead of this because it didn't really come up much. Uh BLS for a backup way to OTK. And uh Appalooza, if we really can't make any of our players, we can just Spam out BAs, make this, and hope for the best. Again, it's something I probably would replace with a Cerberus nowadays if I, th if I thought about it more. And finally, we have one Zeus because um, two, a ball wipe is always good, which is playing one ball wipe, two ball wipes. So we're also playing the DDD package and the Unchained deck. <coughs> now, I originally got this in the deck because I thought, well, you put this over the two, B two BAs, put this over this, and that's a four material Zeus. But surprisingly, these two are actually pretty good 
immaterial of Zeus because uh, Diddy King can suck up monster that uses effects, not once per turn, but once per chain. So with four material, you can basically take out two resources from decks that need a lot of resources on the board. Like you can suck up a pearly monster and possibly make out them to play. You can suck up Kashira cards so they can't go with the four Shangira combo. It, it, it was actually really good today. I definitely would not be playing this style game without, without these two. But usually they were just there to make a big Zeus, which was which was two board wipes that were hard to you want to get out of. And that's going to be an extra deck. Let's go on to the side. Starting things off. Three copies have evenly matched because we don't want to deal with Cash Tira, so I put this in. So then you can take out this Torrential Tribute for going second. Uh, then we have access, to, then we play the Kaiju Engine, three Kaiju Slumber, uh, two Gamma Seals. I, I bought the second one in my deck box, I can't find it. But there were two Gamma Seals and a and a, a Jizakiru for us, for, for our field. This is for obviously for things like Pearly. Or any deck that make up big towers, because the Slim BA can't really out very well. Uh, then we have three compulse. Uh, this is here mostly to uh, be a supposed to for um, a trap a trap that's bad in the matchup. Like for example, if you're playing against Castillo, you can decide this in against them and take out your uh, dragon prison. Um, if you're playing against Unchained, you can put this in so you can bounce them also with so that you want to get their graveyard effects. Um, if this came out twice today against. Uh, the two cashier matchups. One time I didn't draw it, but the time I did, it was really good against them. And finally, some one ofs, one copy of the graves to deal with things like Ghost Bell and um, D Shifter. Um, one Feather Duster for back heavy decks like Labyrinth and Rescue Ace. And second Tour Guide. This is if we're playing a deck that I know is not playing many hand traps. Because if you can guarantee this resolves, then you then yes, definitely play more than one of this. Because th this is in a vacuum the best card in the deck, it's just so hand trap. Beatty that you just don't want to play more than one of it unless you can guarantee the course will be clear and that was the trap of beginning best deck i played today uh, thank you guys for watching and i'll see you hopefully uh tomorrow or tuesday for the next big scripted video see you guys then